my second Flashback Friday video for you guys today. Today is going to be China Glaze. Um, if you guys missed my first one, I did OPI last week and every Friday for the next couple of weeks I am going to recap uh, some of the old collections from the main brands and then maybe some indies at the end. And I'm basically going to go through when I started collecting nail polish to around, well this video is going to have some recent ones as well, but um, to around 2014, 2015-ish because I wanted to reconnect with my collection. I'm a huge nail polish collector and things have gotten to the point where I just want to love my collection again and I have been doing some Shop My Stash videos and you guys have been liking those and so I thought I would go back and show you some of what I think are the highlights of these brands from the last, what, five, six years? Seven years, I guess, um, because I can do math. Uh, this video is only has 55 nail polishes, which compared to OPI is just totally manageable. Um, OPI's video had like 75 nail polishes in it, but um, same as the last video, I will have all the swatches of these in my Instagram as well as I have to make the OPI blog post still, but um, I'll have a blog post of all the swatches as well with um, this video linked in that blog post. If you guys don't follow my nail polish Instagram, you can follow it. It, ha it will have all of the swatches and it's kind of an easy place to find all of the swatches for these if you guys are into Instagram like I am um, so yeah otherwise I don't have anything else to say so let's get started since OPI I was able to find in random beauty supply stores near me China Glaze I primarily sourced from online e-tailers like Idiot Beauty, Trans Design when that was the thing, um, Head to Doe Beauty so yeah same thing as OPI I went through basically Scrangy's blog looked at every single China Glaze nail polish collection um, or post that she had done and ended up with a good list of like core colors or colors that they already had available that were available on e-tailers and really 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 wanting them ordering them and loving them for me China Glaze was the brand of color um, OPI was OPI was the gateway drug, but you want, like, I feel like everyone goes through this. They they fall in love with OPI, and then they find China Glaze and realize that China Glaze is where you go to to get blue and green and glitter and neon and all these really fun colors because um, although OPI has done a good job with color and glitter and texture in the last couple of years, at least since 2009, I think, um, I mean, they, did, they kind of were the first ones, I guess, to do hollow too, but... Um, but China Glaze really does have like the a certain niche in everyone's polish lives in that it is like the gateway color collection that you go to. You'll notice that a lot of the China Glaze colors that I have are actually glitters because um, for me, like I said, China Glaze was like China Glaze was the brand for color for me, but it's also done very very well in glitter for me. I can't actually tell you what my absolute first China Glaze color was because I think I just did a order from an online e-tailer but the first one that I really did track down was for Audrey by China Glaze which is their classic Tiffany blue cream. Um, I feel like everyone loves this color. Everyone buys this color. It's part of their core collection. It's beautiful. It's bright. It's turquoisey and there's not very much to say about it that people haven't said before. Another one has to be Ruby Pumps which is the the red jelly base with red micro glitter stuffed into it and it's just so pretty and it was the first red glitter nail polish I think that I ever had. I was very very fortunate to be collecting nail polish right when Emerald Sparkle, Sparkle kind of made its, I think it was its second round um, in being released and people going crazy for it. This is an emeraldy green glitter in a sort of deeper green base as well. This is stunning. This is the green polish that I remember being one of my first green polishes and just like just like getting it like understanding why people loved green nail polish because I still think at the point of 2009 green nail polish was not as easy to find and Emerald Sparkle was like I feel like the one that like every blog talked about. The next color is Frostbite by China Glaze which is a very very bold bright um, but still sort of dark blue shimmery nail polish. 
This thing is just so pretty. It's so saturated. It looks good on like everyone. This is the color in Lubu Heels, which was my first sort of like black sexy nail polish. This is a black base with a red glitter running through it. This came out in a collection I think that was celebrated Louboutin shoes, um, which is why it's called Lubu Heels and it's black and red. But I just, I remember seeing this on Scrangy as well and thinking that is so unique. That's so cool. Um, it's again, very sexy and very like, it's different than like any other color that I had, even looking at the OPI nail polishes that I had. Like this was something that that kind of made it to like my top shelf when I first started collecting nail polish. This is Fairy Dust and this is actually a very very old nail polish and you can tell because the label on the bottom is white. Um, this is a clear base with a very speckly um, hollow micro glitter running through it and this was the only hollow micro glitter that I had for a very long time because before Indies and even in the first couple of years of Indies I feel like you couldn't get a hollow micro glitter like this and so this was the glitter that I put over everything I've used quite a bit of it I also remember say anything Brooke when she was still making nail polish videos I watched a lot of her nail polish videos and saw these particular colors because she was a periwinkle and like a light purple cream lover I think she I think her favorite nail polish finish is actually creams um, she's the one that I like found hollows from but she loved cream nail polishes. In particular, she talked about Secret Periwinkle. Um, she also talked about Agent Lavender. Um, Scrangy also talked about these quite often as well and quite fondly. Secret Periwinkle is a periwinkle cream. It's a little bit darker than your standard periwinkle and Agent Lavender was the first light purple cream that I ever purchased and again, totally was in love with these. Totally different from anything that I had ever owned before. This one is Atlantis and I actually, um, I thought I had thrown this away because it's quite a gross little bottle of nail polish now because it's like so dried out and so hard to use. I, for swatching sake, will put a nail polish center in this to see if I can actually like revive some of it so I can swatch it for you. But this was one of the first China Glaze glitters that I ever purchased as well. This is a turquoise sort of lagoon green base with a hollow gl glitter running through it. Um, this was one of my very first China Glaze loves as well. This was so, so pretty. There's another color meteor shower that I have actually gotten rid of because it was just like unusable to, at this point. Um, I got rid of it like a year ago, but that was another one that I really, really loved um, and purchased alongside Atlantis. And then this is the color in Custom Kicks, which is going to kick up kick off um, where I started with nail polish collecting. This I actually didn't purchase until a couple years ago, um, but this was part of a 2009 collection and um, it was it was released right before I started collecting nail polish. Um, this is a turquoise base with a gold shimmer running through it. It's super opaque, really beautiful, really bright. It just like screams China Glaze to me. This is the sort of color that I think China Glaze does the best. The first collection that I really actually coveted though, which I think that everyone <laughs> covets, is the China Glaze OMG collection. October through December of 2009 was spent collecting these polishes that I just showed you, as well as tracking down as many of the China Glaze OMG collection that I could find. Um, I didn't realize that Chi the China Glaze OMG collection had recently been released, or at least like within the last, within the six months that I started collecting nail polish, so I was very fortunate at that to be able to find so many on e-tailers. Um, these two particularly are my favorites. This one is Deviate, which is a tealy, turquoise hollow. And this one is in Tonight, which is a really cool toned blue color. They're beautiful. They are the first hollows that I ever purchased before I realized how difficult it was to purchase hollows. I remember Scrangy, Say Anything Brook, X Barkage, um, everyone, was raving about these China Glaze hollows and I didn't really understand. Like I didn't understand until I had them in person and realized it was a rainbow on your nails. These were like my prize, they're still like my prized possessions and I love them and I use them sparingly because I don't have backups of them but the OMG collection was like for me like highlight above all of China Glaze. In 2010 the first China Glaze collection that I was actually around for and to be able to covet and track down was the Up and Away collection, which was an entire collection of pastels and one bright. Um, this particular one I think is the best one from that collection. This is in Four Leaf Clover and it is a super bright, 
kind of neon it feels kind of neon when you put it on your nails um green color that's not really clovery to me it's got a little bit of a blue undertone to it which um is different than the other greens that I have and is also much more green than the turquoises that I have but this I think was the standout of that collection I recently featured Lemon Fizz and Light as Air from the same collection in my Spring Nail Polish Picks video, so I'll link that down below if you guys want to see them. Um, my other favorite from that collection was in Refreshment, which is a very, very minty green color. This has very little blue undertones to it. It's much more of a green than compared to um, like Mint Candy Apple by Essie, for example. I really liked that collection. It was my first collection, I think, of like pastels that I ever went and purchased, so that was kind of like a milestone for me. Right after that, the Poolside collection was the Chani Lay Summer Collection for that year and it was Neons and it was the original release of Flip Flop Fantasy and Pool Party and these are the original formulas and I literally I have used this much of um, this bottle of Flip Flop Fantasy and I've used this much of this bottle of um, Pool Party and they're just they're amazing neons like you the camera like doesn't even pick up on how amazing this is because it kind of freaks out um, but yeah, they are absolutely stunning neons. I remember that collection, again, was just like a groundbreaking moment for me because they were like my first neons that I ever purchased. For me, I think 2010 was one of my favorite years of China Glaze because it might have just been because for me it was like the first year of collecting China Glaze completely on my own. But their nail polish collections that year were just like so much better, I feel like, than other years. Continuing with 2010, the fall collection was called the Vintage Vixen Collection, which was kind of your standard fall collection. It had a lot of jewel tones um, and it had a lot of sort of those like chic colors. One of them being an Ingrid. This is like a mushroomy brown with a gold shimmer running through it. This is Emerald Fitzgerald though and this is a really really deep teal shimmery color and I don't use this as often but it's just a classic jewel toned fall color. That year's Halloween collection which for me sort of started the um, trend of always looking for China Glaze's Halloween collections because I always found that they were some of the best collections that China Glaze did every year. Um, it started with this 2010 fall collection or Halloween collection called the Awakening Collection. It came with three nail polishes I believe. The first one is Ichabody which I have gotten rid of because it got really gross again. Um, and then there was Mummy May I and Zombie Zest. Zombie Zest was a swampy green with a glass fleck shimmer running through it and so so gorgeous and I just I wish I had another one but it's stunning. For like such an ugly green color it's really quite a beautiful nail polish. And then Mummy May I was like a plummy base with a bright purple glitter running through it. And these were just the beginning of China Glaze, which just like being the best for Halloween stuff. And I just, I love them. Actually, I feel like they only did like two or three good Halloween collections, but this was the start of it. And then for holiday that year, they had the Tis the Season holiday collection, which again was like another thing that I looked forward to years after that because the 2010 holiday collection really did it for me. They had, I think, the best holiday collection that year. Um, this one is in Mistletoe Kisses, which is sort of like an evergreen, like winter green glitter with like silver glitter mixed in. And it's just the perfect spearminty holiday green color. And then this is the color Party Hardy, which is my go-to holiday like Christmas glitter. I still use it. Um, it's red hex and green hex and silver Michael glitter and it's just the most festive like nail polish glitter and like the combo of these is just amazing. And then moving on to 2011 they had the Anchors Away collection for spring um, which was like a bunch of nautical themed colors. My favorite from that collection was actually in white cap which is a really 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 pretty like golden glass fleck shimmer in a clear base but there's like so much glass fleck shimmer packed into there that it looks like pearly and gold on your nail. 2011 then had the Tronica collection which to me was like 
the first of a couple not OMG collections from China Glaze. So I didn't purchase anything from the Tronica, collect Tronica collection. 2011 was also the birth of Crackle Nail Polishes. So China Glaze had a Crackle Glaze collection, which was okay. Nothing really of note for me to mention though. And then there was the Island Escape collection, which I didn't purchase anything from. And then there was the Metro collection for fall. I have two from the Metro collection. The first one is Midtown Magic, which is a very, very, very dark purple with a bright glass flex shimmer running through it. And then there was Skyscraper. To me, Skyscraper was the runaway color from that collection. I didn't actually, I wasn't actually really impressed with that fall collection because I don't remember any of the other colors from that collection, but I did actually really like these. Um, Skyscraper was a bluish purple jelly base with a bunch of bright um, is silvery glitter. The Halloween collection for that year was the Haunting Collection, which included the color It's Alive, which really reminded me of Zombie Zest. Um, it had a little bit more glitter packed into it though, so it wasn't just a glass fleck shimmer in the swampy green. That year for winter, they actually had a separate collection from their holiday collection, and it was the Eye Candy 3D collection, which was all based off of Marilyn Monroe. Um, so they had a bunch of like really dense, packed, chunky sort of glitters um, and micro glitters mixed in to this collection. Um, my favorite from that one is actually Love Marilyn, which is a red and silver glitter, but they also had some like It Hot and Marry a Millionaire, and it was just a whole collection of of dense glitters, and so I thought that was actually really fun. The holiday collection for 2011 was the Let It Snow collection. I have three favorites from that collection. This one is the color Glittering Garland, which is a sort of foresty green color with a glass fleck going through it. Really, really pretty. This is the color in Tinseltown, which is sort of a gunmetal-y glitter color. It's again a very, very dense packed glitter um, in less of a chunk and more of like a like a micro glitter formula. And I actually really like this because they could have gone super bright and silver with this, but they made it more um, gunmetal-y, which I thought was different than most of the glitters that I had at that point. And this is the color in Twinkle Lights, which also became a very popular holiday color for me because it was a mix of pale gold, red, and green micro glitter in a clear base, but it's very, very densely packed so you could wear it on its own. So after 2011, which was a year of of some pretty good favorites, but I didn't purchase as much as I thought I did. Um, 2012 opened up with the Hunger Games collection, which Hunger Games got huge because of the book, and then the movie came out, and then they did all these things that were based off of the Hunger Games, and China Glaze got to produce, or partnered up with the Hunger Games, and made an entire collection, and I bought the entire collection. I think I did a giveaway of the entire collection and it was one of my most popular videos at that point because I did a swatch and review of it and it was just, I remember how huge that, that movie got and the nail polish collection just made me like so much more excited for it. Of that collection, I have four favorites. Um, the first one is in Electrify, which is again, a very dense micro glitter, but in a very bright gold and a red glitter mixed in. There was Fast Track, which is um, like a grainy, like a really, really pale grainy sort of light beigey taupe color with a glass fleck running through it. This was one of my favorite neutrals for the longest time. Like I wore that whenever I wanted a palette cleanser and I liked it because the glass fleck shimmer in there made it sparkly. The color in Harvest Moon, which is one of my favorite fall colors, it's so rich and it's bronzy and it glides onto the nail beautifully. And it looks so good on like so many people. And then the color Smoke and Ashes, which the issue with this color was that I think a lot of people, there were two different versions floating around for a while. I happened to get the good version, which was, it's a really, really dark, I want to say it's like an indigo-y based bluish black color um, with a bright sort of glass fleck running through it. But a lot of people's didn't the glass fleck didn't show up. Mine actually shows up really beautifully, so I lucked out in getting a good bottle of it, but there were a couple of... China Glaze had a, like a couple of different alternate versions of things, problems for a while there, because there were quite a few like different formulas of the same nail polish floating around, and people had a lot of issue with them. 2012, the fad that I feel like kind of failed to come off the ground was the magnet like the magnetic polish thing. Um, they had a magnetics collection, which I also did, I think, a video of. And um, 
it was a good concept, but it just was not that convenient. Um, then came the Prismatics collection, which was another not OMG collection to me, so I didn't purchase any of them. There was the Electropop collection, which I didn't purchase anything from. And then there was a Summer Neons collection, which I didn't purchase anything from because they didn't have any dupes of um, Flip Flop Fantasy or the original Pool Party collection. And then they had the Bohemian Luster Chrome collection, which was a small collection. I think that came out like right in the middle of summer of of a bunch of duo chromes. Um, this came out at the same time the Spider-Man collection came out and that Chanel Peridot came out. So it was a really big fad at that point. Um, but these make for gorgeous gradient nail polishes. Um, this one is in Deviantly Daring, which is primarily a turquoise to blue. And then this one is Unpredictable, which goes from a really pale light green to a turquoise to blue. For fall of 2012 was the On Safari collection. After like a year of not being very impressed with fall, I was really excited for this fall collection because this is when they started coming out with the micro, like the super micro glitters. I'll talk about those in a second. The actual colors from that collection. I really loved Manhunt. This was when Cobalt Blues got super popular again. So this is Manhunt and it's a Cobalt Blue Cream. And then this is Pray Tell, which is a really beautiful, dark, vampy, burgundy red color, which is not entirely unique in the realm of nail polish but I just remember when this came out it was so shiny like I saw swatches and it was so shiny. It was so rich. It was so pretty and vampy. And it was pretty easy to work with, so I really loved this. And then came those super micro glitters. Um, this is I'm Not Lion, which is a really pale champagne micro glitter with hollow micro glitter mixed in as well. These are completely opaque on their own after a couple of coats. And um, this one is in I Heard That, and this is a mix of like a bronze and a gold. And they're gorgeous. And I remember when these came out, I, I didn't really have very much faith in China Glaze. And then I saw these in Swatch, and I thought, Yes, they did it again. They're back. After that, they had a Wicked Color for Halloween collection, and I didn't purchase anything from that collection because they weren't zombie zest and they weren't that it's alive, and it just, for whatever reason, like, those 2009 collections made such an impression on me that anything after that just, like, didn't impress me as much. Um, so... They also had a Cirque du Soleil collection, which I was so excited about, and then I never purchased anything from it because it was just like, it was an underwhelming collection, I think, to me. Um, they had some chunky glitters, like, that were very similar to Linderella glitters, which I thought was very cool, which I thought was really good that they, again, embraced the fad that was going on and responded to what nail polish buyers wanted, but I just remember not, I just remember not being very, like, excited about the actual colors, even though I love Cirque du Soleil, like, I'm a super Cirque du Soleil fan, just not a very fun collection. And then for holiday that year, they totally made up for it because look at all these glitters. Um, I have five glitters from that holiday collection, and I remember seeing the promo pics and then being like, I forgive you, China Glaze, for letting me down on Cirque du Soleil and, you know, fall and summer and whatever. So um, this one is in Angel Wings, which is a gold micro glitter with a hollow mixed in. This one is in Glitter All The Way, which is sort of like a Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras mix of glitters. It's gold, purple, green, and red. Um, this is not quite as finely milled of a glitter as the other like super micro glitters I was just talking about were, but it is still densely packed and opaque on its own. This one is in Winter Holly, which is a green micro glitter with a gold mixed into it, and this is one of those like super micro glitters that I was talking about. And then these two are also the super micro litters. This one is in Glistening Snow, and this one is in Champagne Kisses. And so I loved this holiday collection. Unfortunately, in 2013, they did the same thing to me, though, because they had the Glitz Bits and Pieces collection, which I didn't purchase anything from. They had the Transitions collection, which was the, like the thermal nail polish that I just didn't purchase anything from. They had Avant Garden, which I didn't purchase anything from. They had the Hollow Glam collection, which was another not OMG collection. They had the texture polishes, which were all um, not the glittery type of texture polish, the cream texture polishes, which I didn't purchase anything from. And then I finally purchased something from China Glaze that summer from their Sensational collection because they came out with a bunch of neons that were creams as well as jellies. I purchased two in hopes that it would be similar to Flip Flop Fantasy. 
They're not similar to Flip Flop Fantasy, but they're still pretty colors nonetheless. Um, this one, the darker one is in Shello, and the lighter one is in Neon and On and On. Shello is actually a jelly, and Neon and On and On is a cream. After that, they had the Autumn Nights collection, which I didn't purchase anything from. Monster Ball, Monsters Ball collection, which was their Halloween collection, which I didn't purchase anything from. Um, every year, China Glaze does a breast cancer awareness collection. Um, the That year was the first year that I purchased anything from their breast cancer collection because normally it's like pinks and colors that I wouldn't wear. But that year they came out with This One's For You, which was a clear base with a bunch of iridescent micro shimmer mixed in with a, an opalescent hex glitter, which was actually very, very easy to work with. The formula for these in the past used to be quite goopy. This one was very liquidy though and was really, really easy to work with. So I absolutely love this one. It makes for a really pretty iridescent top coat on like anything, but I think it looks best on blues for me. For holidays that year, they had the Happy Holla Glaze collection, which included one of my favorite red nail polishes that China Glaze has ever released. And honestly is one of the most standard colors that I've ever purchased from China Glaze. This is the color Just Be Claws and it looks like a satin red ribbon and it's just beautiful. It's like a perfect Christmas red. From that same holiday collection they had this little mini called Traveling Color which was very similar to this one's for you but this one was just glass fleck um, micro shimmer that was like a shifty in color. It's a top coat. It's a little bit of a dense top coat but it's still layered over um, layered over like any dark nail polish and it's just gorgeous. After that they actually had another sort of winter collection, kind of like that Marilyn Monroe collection. It was the Crinkled Chrome collection and I didn't purchase anything from it because it was like a chrome polish with like glitter mixed in so the chrome on top would then look sort of crinkly and it was not my thing. Um, for 2014 they literally did not impress me with anything. I didn't even write down any collections. I actually don't think I purchased any nail polish from China Glaze in 2014, to be honest with you. Um, at least any new polishes from 2014, because at that point China Glaze did come to Rite Aids in my area, so I was able to purchase some like old colors. Um, the one color that I got from a China Glaze 2014 collection, I actually purchased this past 2015. It was from the City Floors collection. Again, I found this in 2015, but it's in the color Thistle Do Nicely, and I wanted to mention this because I, just in desperation at that point, because I had never found a dupe for Flip Flop Fantasy, ended up on Valicia Peachy Polish's vlog and saw this and thought, in her swatch that looked very very similar to the original flip flop fantasy so I kind of by chance ordered it to see what it was like and look at that I've actually talked about this in a video but color wise they're entirely the same I would say flip flop fantasy is maybe a little bit a little bit brighter but color wise they're just they're exactly the same. So I went crazy and was so excited to find a color that was so similar to Flip Flop Fantasy. Um, I actually did a nail polish comparison photo of this on my nail polish blog. I'll put a screenshot of it here, but on the nail they're virtually indistinguishable. So that is my China Glaze Flashback Friday video. I hope you guys liked this video. Um, I hope you guys liked reminiscing over old polishes with me. And if you guys have any favorite China Glaze nail polishes, I would love to know what they are. So go ahead and comment down below with your favorite ones if you would like to talk to me about it. Um, if not, if you guys could give this video a thumbs up, I would be eternally grateful to you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Not all my videos are this long. Most of them range between 14 and 15 minutes because I'm a talker. Um, if you guys are new though, it would be lovely if you could subscribe. It would totally make my day and again, I would be eternally grateful to you. Um, if you guys want to see the OPI video, I will link it down below. It'll be the first link in the description box. It'll be the second link in the description box. I'll put the, um, the Polish Garden post for the China Glaze Collections as the first link, which is my main resource for this entire project. And then otherwise, if you want to see photo swatches of all of these, I will link my Instagram down below so you guys can see them. And then otherwise, I hope you guys are doing well. And SC will be the Flashback Friday video for next week. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And I will see you guys soon.